one of the challenges that's been happening with MarkEdit has been uh, the transition on Windows-based systems from 32 to 64-bit. Uh, in MarkEdit, the application is uh, essentially platform agnostic. The tools compiled in a way that if you're running a 32-bit system, uh, the application runs in 32-bit mode. If you're running a 64-bit system, it runs in a 64-bit mode. The problem that we run into is that uh, some of the plugins, specifically the plugin for working with OCLC's connection data files, requires that the user be working in a 32-bit environment. Uh, the reason for this is that uh, OCLC's connection program uh, utilizes Microsoft Access, or at least the Access format, uh, for storing their data for storing their data in their their data file. Uh, the challenge then is that. Uh, MarkEdit has to utilize um, a component to read the data from that file. Uh, on Windows, those components are natively 32-bit. Uh, the only time that that's going to be the only time that changes is if you install Office uh, and you install it as a 64-bit application. Uh, the challenge is that happens very rarely. Uh, most of the time, when people install Office, uh, they install it as a 32-bit application, and that's mostly because that's how it happens by default. So, uh, currently, when you're running MarkEdit and you have the uh, connection plugin installed, uh, and I have it installed here, uh, users can get to this point, and when they select the OCLC data file that they want to load and click load, they get an error. Uh, the error is different than what you're seeing here. I've made some changes to the plugin. Uh, the plugin error now will trap for this particular error and will um, give you an explanation of what this what's happening. Uh, in this case it's, it's telling you um, about the the Windows OBDC database components, uh, the fact that connection uses them, um, and how MarkEdit has to interact with Windows uh, to interact with these components. Uh, the challenge has been that once users have moved to a 32 moved from a 32 to a 64-bit environment there really hasn't been a good way to allow people to use this plugin. Uh, that's changed. Uh, for um, uh, as part of my annual uh, Mark Edit Christmas update, uh, one of the things that uh, I've changed in the application is the uh, embedding of a 32-bit mode. And what this does is this creates a shell around the application, um, so the application thinks that it's running within a 32-bit environment, and all of the processes access uh, all the processes run as 32-bit which should allow the application to run uh, connection, uh, the connection plugin. So here's running it in the traditional mode, 64-bit environment. You'll see that it tells you that there's the error, um, why, it's think it's ha why it thinks that this error is happening, um, and it gives you some information about how if you want to continue to utilize this local plugin, uh, you'll need to restart MarkEdit in 32-bit mode. So how do we do that? Uh, so we'll go ahead and we'll close the plugin. We'll go back out to the main window, and under File, uh, you'll find a, a new link that's called Restart Mark Edit in 32-bit mode. There's a shortcut, Control R, um, that you can use. So when you go ahead and you run this, uh, it'll close the current window that Mark Edit is running in, and we'll reopen the program using the shell application to enable it to run in a 32-bit environment. So now when I click on the Mark Editor, and I go to the plugin, and I run the plugin, and I tell it to load. It can interact with the OCLC uh, connection database because the application itself um, is running in a 32-bit environment, um, so it can interact with other 32-bit components. Uh, the main one being um, the the database components that are a part of Windows um, or a part of Office that allow you to interact um, with the Access database. So now you can go ahead and select the records for edit. Um, we can go ahead and we can add uh, fields for video. We can go ahead and add that. Let's see, we can add. Let's see that we've added the field here, in the 500 field. Um, we have the button here where we can save the data back to connection and the data has been saved and now we can go ahead and open up connection and 
and check the local save file. And uh, see that the data element's been added. Uh, the other thing that I've been working on um, with the plugin is I've been making a couple of small changes. One of the changes um, that uh, uh, has been made is um, in the uh, previous instance, uh, Mark Edit didn't edit any of the data in the 008, which meant that when you brought data into Mark the Mark Editor, um, the 008 was technically invalid uh, because the date value that OCLC stores internally is a four-digit date. Uh, well, uh, four, it's technically an eight-digit date. Um, in Mark, it's a six-digit date. The uh, corresponding two digits for the, the year are dropped. So um, you would see something like 2000. Instead of 2012, 1212, uh, you would see 121212. Um, in the uh, Mark record, in the OCLC record, you would see the 2012 to 1212. So uh, the application uh, tinkers with that data so that it comes back um, into Mark Edit and back into OCLC correctly. Um, but I think that this gives you gives users who um, want to work with uh, uh, Mark Edit and uh, and still interact with the connection data files a, a way going forward. Um, this also will allow um, me to do a handful of other plugins that uh, I've been putting off, um, partly because of the fact that uh, they worked with third-party um, applications um, or data files or components, um, but they had to be run in a 32-bit environment. And given the fact that uh, uh, most new computers being purchased now um, run 64-bit systems, uh, that was becoming very problematic. Uh, the other thing that I think that this potentially could do um, in Mark Edit, uh, there's a debug mode uh, that I run uh, specifically uh, on my own development machines because the process to do it is fairly involved. Um, but when there are issues, uh, very difficult issues to debug um, that have to do with data uh, that cause, uh, that may potentially throw some kind of an error. Uh, it's difficult for, for individuals and, and are difficult for individuals to find. Um, uh, they'll send them to me and I can put Mark Edit into this debugging mode and Mark Edit will tell you um, exactly, will tell me exactly what um, the last data element processed was so I can see where the error occurred. Um, I've been wanting to make that available to um, users, uh, but the difficulty has been uh, being able to expose some of that data. Uh, my hope is uh, that using um, some of the same techniques that I've used uh, with the 32-bit environment mode, uh, this concept of, of essentially creating a, a virtualized environment um, for the application uh, will allow me to experiment somewhat with how to uh, make some of these um, uh, more complicated debugging components available to users. Okay, so. Um, to summarize, new to Mark Edit as of uh, Christmas 2013 update um, is the uh, restart Mark Edit in 32-bit mode. Um, it's under the file 32-bit uh, mode environment. Um, this will allow you to